Hello there, my name is Michael Maynard and welcome back to Gorilla Picking. Now, we've got a bit of a fun one today guys. Um, you may remember that about 12 months ago I bought three of these absolutely monstrous Folger Adam jail locks and um, uh, I've, I've got one in this, um, this brass colour and I have got two in this kind of chrome colour. Um, luckily enough, all with the same keyway, believe it or not, but uh, I didn't have a key for any of them. Now that is because when these mogul locks are taken out of jails, they are supposed to be destroyed. So the keys are supposed to be cut in half and uh, otherwise, otherwise demolished. Um, but just every now and again one comes up on, uh, on eBay and about, oh, I don't know, a couple of months ago, something like that, um, in actual fact some guy popped up selling a few keys and I thought, right, okay, well I don't know whether they're going to fit my locks because there are a few different, uh, different keyways for these things, but I'll take a punt and I'll get a couple anyway. So what I did was I asked him to send me two in different bittings uh, I'm not going to tell you what I paid for them because they weren't cheap and um, what he actually did was sent me two the same which didn't uh, please me over much but I figured that beggars couldn't be choosers so now what I've got is a couple of keys and um, three locks that are fully pinned up but none of which I have got a key for so the question now becomes can we key up at least one of these things um, to make it fit this key and uh, it turns out that we can so what I did I had a bit of a rummage and uh, if I just get out the bag of pins here what I did was tipped out all the uh, all the key pins from all the three locks you can see them in there and um, the, the issue then was okay alright well can we find a set of pins that will suit this bitting and that's where things get a little bit interesting guys because um, to do that you could either go through every single bloody pin in the thing and try and match it up and you know it's just a pain in the backside or you could use your brain cells and you could use your calipers and you could use your calculator and you could do it properly so I'll, I'll show you what I did to figure out what key pins what, what length key pins you need for a lock you need to figure out the root depth. So the root depth of each cut is the distance from the bottom of the cut to the bottom of the key. So just for argument's sake, in position one here, the root depth of number one is 363, near enough, so uh, 363 thousandths. And we also know that the diameter of the plug is a 74 thousandths. Now, a moment's thought will tell you that um, the diameter of the plug, 874, minus the root depth, whatever it is, in this case 363, is going to give you the length that the key pin needs to be. So let's just have a look and see how that works. Here's our key, here's our core. Um, the bottom of the key is absolutely flush with the bottom of this uh, the, the core and obviously the top of the key pin has to meet the shear line up here which is the top of this side of the core and that dimension is 874 so all you got to do is take one from the other and it turns out that if you take 364 from uh, 874 you get 0.51 so basically half an inch and then it's a case of having a look at your pins and seeing what you got. Now, um, if you have a look at the pins here, you will see that there is one extra complicating factor that we need to think about. And uh, that is that because on these moguls, they are built for massively heavy use, they've actually got a ball bearing in between the key and the key pin as well. So the key pins are not standard key pins with um, uh, a crown at the top and a point at the bottom to interact with the key. Um, what we have is a, uh, a little crown at the top right enough but there is a dimple on the bottom of that key pin and the ball bearing 
sits in that dimple like so to reduce the friction so that you, you don't get too much wear. So instead of just measuring the key pin by itself, and in this case this particular one is 358,000 near enough, um, you actually have to measure the combination of the key pin and the ball bearing. And it just so happens that if you do that, if I can do this without uh, knocking the thing over, there we go. Surprise, surprise, um, that one there absolutely smack on to, to within a thousandth of an inch. So, um, having done that, all you've got to do is go through and measure all five of the depths, do your subtraction, so take that number away and uh, do a little bit of measuring, and then hey presto, it turned out that I did in fact have um, enough bottom pins here to pin up this lock. All we then need to do is figure out how to put the lock together. So you may recall that these things have a master ring. So they work on a very, very cunning master keying system. And um, there's a previous video on that. I, I won't link to that right now. But um, if you want to go and have a look at how this master thing works, um, go back in and have a look at that other one. So when you're putting this thing together, there are just a couple of extra steps and then away we go. So I'll get the, uh, the springs and the top pins sorted out. There we go. And uh, you'll see that I've elected to pin this up with three spools and two standards. So uh, we've got a standard pin at each end and then three of these absolutely massive milk bottle spool things um, in the middle there. So you can see that this is going to be a very difficult lock to pick. Now what we've got to do is um, get all the component parts together and uh, put it together. So we've got our lock body. We have got our anti-drill protection ring, so that's just a lump of steel that uh, goes in there and stops drilling attacks from the front. We then put our master cylinder in, like so. Okay, so we've now got all five springs in place down in those uh, chambers. Next thing we've got to do is get the follower. And uh, you may remember that um, this thing is, again, so big that an ordinary follower um, is just like throwing the proverbial hot dog up the hallway. It's just not going to work. So um, what I used, I cut the end off of a broom handle. So this is a, uh, this is a piece of... Uh, cheap metal broom handle um, and that is just a no more the right size it's actually a little bit too small even now um, but it's uh, it's all ahead so that's what we're going to use so let's use that to pin this thing up Okay, so uh, now we have got all those pins in there. Now, as you guys know, I shim every goddamn lock I, uh, I work on simply because it's easier to shim it and not need the shim than it is to uh, not shim it and make a disaster. Now let's get the core pinned up. So first of all, these ball bearings go in, one, two, three, four, and five. Now the uh, key pins themselves, making sure we get the dimple going down so that it interacts with the ball bearing. Okay, looking good, but we check everything, so let's put the key in and make sure that everything comes to the shear line. That looks pretty damn good to me. So now all that remains is to uh, get this thing in there without dropping pins all over the place. There we go. 
shim now comes out the back. Key is very gingerly removed so that we don't rip the core out. And now let's just get a bit of a tailpiece on there. So Okay, there you have it folks, um, one now pinned up and operational mogul jail lock complete with key, look at that, um, I just love the fact that this was probably in use for probably 50 years in all honesty, I mean this is, this is a lock that's been long superseded now, um, I don't know what jail it came out of, and I don't know what jail this key came out of either, but I'd be willing to bet they were two different ones. And uh, the pins in here, some of them are from completely different locks. So uh, between all of these things, we put together a functional lock again. I think that's fantastic, eh? I really do. Piece of history right there. So that is how you uh, pin up a lock. We looked at the root depths of the key. We subtracted those root depths from the diameter of the plug. We found key pins that were going to be the appropriate length and we had to make an allowance for the for the ball bearing as well. Put it all together nice and carefully, used a shim and we have got a beautiful old and massive piece of history operational again. Thanks for watching guys. My name's Michael Maynard. This is Gorilla Picking and that is a beautiful old jail lock. Thanks guys.